this afternoon. Welcome to this Te Putiaki Manatanga Association of Educators Beyond the Classroom webinar. This is the 10th in our series um, and the title is Creating Worthwhile Art Learning Videos Simply with the wonderful Esther McNaughton. So we'll begin as usual um, with a karakia and then after that I'll introduce Esther and tell you a bit about what she's going to share with us today. Whakatakati hau ki te uru, whakatakati hau ki te tonga, ki a mā kina kina ki uta, ki a mā taratara ki tai, e hi aki ana te atakura, e tio, hei huka, hei hauhu, ti hei mauri ora. So Esther, um, I've known Esther for several years now. We first met um, Oh, probably well over 10 years ago in Dunedin at a MEANS conference. So MEANS was the predecessing, um, predecessor organisation to Te Pūtiaki Manatanga. And um, we connected at that conference, had some great um, conversations and we've been in touch ever since. Esther's an amazing educator. She's got over 20 years experience as an art gallery educator and she's the team leader at the Suta Art Gallery, Te Aratoi Te Pakatu in Nelson, which is a beautiful gallery if any of you have visited. She's recently completed her PhD, which was a national study into the pedagogy of um, education in art galleries in Aotearoa. So um, we're going to put some links to her PhD um, on our website and maybe in the chat today. So I'd encourage you all to read it or read the synopsis. Really great case studies there. Um, so today Esther is going to um, begin by showing us some of the content that she put together in her video tutorials which she began making back in 2020 during the first lockdown. She'll then go on to show us how she made them and she did this with no budget, no fancy technical equipment and no prior experience in how to make videos. So it's a really great example of how you can create something on a shoestring just with things that you already have around you. Um, there'll be time at the end of her presentation for questions. And as usual, we ask you to write your comments and questions in the chat and Monica and myself will keep an eye on those during the presentation. And then we'll present them to Esther for answers at the end of her presentation. Um, and with the impending feeling that Omicron is about to spread more widely in our communities and lots of organisations I know are already facing large numbers of cancellations for school visits at the moment, I think this webinar is very timely. It will be good food for thought about how we can pivot our education offerings and reach students remotely. So thank you for being here Esther and sharing your work with us. Over to you. Kia ora. Thank you very much for that amazing introduction, Helen. Um, I'll, um, I'm going to just share my screen now just to get started. And um, when I get onto that, I'll, I'll introduce everything. There we go. And right. Kia ora koutou everyone. Um, it's really lovely to see so many people here. Um, um, I was originally pretty a little bit sheepish about presenting my um, programs that I started to create um, from 2020 onwards because I was thinking that well really anyone could do them but maybe that's the point anyone can do them and they're really easy to to do and I'm sure that you guys um, I'm showing them here today because I know that you guys can if you haven't already started doing it you can do them at least as well as me probably like five times better easily um, so um, it's really a discussion starter so I'll, I'll lead you through um, a, a few examples because I know it's really nice to see examples of people's practice and um, then I'll show you the simple technology I use, which is really could be interchangeable for any sort of technology that you know how to use already. Um, so um, here we go. So um, these are um, the shot you can see here is um, some, some of the little short educational videos I've made. Um, so um, I have a YouTube channel, which I started in 2020 um, 
at the beginning of um, our first lockdown. Um, and that's where I put all my videos that I create for my um, LEOTC students. Um, so it all started in lockdown 2020. Um, so as we know, <laughs> we all suddenly got put in a position that we um, we we just had, weren't prepared for because we, we'd never had anything like it before. And all of a sudden, so many aspects of our lives, we had to think about how we were going to manage things and, um, and you know, our work and our home life and everything all came together and um, things were a bit crazy. <laughs> Hopefully things are going to be a bit better now, <laughs> but at, at the beginning it was all very new. Um, and so I decided as, as quickly as possible, I um, start to try and get something together using the resources I had, you know, the resources I feel grateful to have LEOTC funding at SUTA. Um, and um, so um, I used that funding to start immediately to create some educational resources that could be used by children who were school children who were learning at home um, during, during that lockdown. And so I, I had a bit of a think about it and thought about what would be worthwhile to do at that time. And so um, I wanted to um, get something that would be really easy to use, easy for easy for the kids to use, easy for their parents to support them with, and easy for the teachers to put into their programs, but as well as being easy, being worthwhile. Um, and I also wanted to do something that would support the children and, and their families. Um, so something that sort of thought a lot about well-being and um, and positivity at that time. And so I was focusing on our local community. Um, it was aimed at a local audience um, because you know I'm a Nelson. I, I provide services um, at the Suta, and the Suta we we really don't get many visitors from very far away at all. Everybody's Nelson and Tasman because um, our school groups don't really come through from other places very much. So it, it was very much a regional focus thing that I was doing. So I was aiming for that. So I was aiming for something that was local. Um, I wanted to show my face and our venue a lot because it's something the children already knew. And I thought that at that time, um, having the security for the children, that would actually be a good thing because it'd be something they knew about. Um, and um, uh, well, one thing that was of benefit was that we could highlight our collection um, and help the children to develop, and their families, of course, to develop, uh, increase their relationship to the, some of the artworks that we have in our region. And um, and I also saw that there was the opportunity for the, all those exhibitions that were actually on show during lockdown that you couldn't see um, because the gallery was shut. Well, this was could be a window into some of them and I, that you'll particularly see that later on. Um, the activities for the children were um, using equipment, just equipment that would they could find materials around the home really. And I aimed to put out one program per week school week during the initial lockdown for, for, as part of their school program. That was a hard ask, especially considering I'm 0.5 at SOTA, so that gave me 20 hours a week to do everything. Um, and that was a lot of work. So um, partly because of that, I really didn't aim for technical excellence. Um, I'm not bad at technical things, but um, I'm, I'm really not advanced at anything. So. Um, and I didn't really have time to learn anything, well, not very much new. So um, I just wanted to use something that was easy and make a worthwhile and positive experience for the kids. Taking time to learn the new technology would just slow me down. So I didn't, I mean, I did a bit, but not very much. I used the simplest I could find that would work for me. So I'm going to just show you a few examples now. Um, the very first one I made was... Um, well, I called them stay-at-home art adventures, and every single one I did had a, a picture like this at the beginning with me on the front, just just not because I particularly wanted to show myself off, but just because I'm a, a face they know. Um, and also, in this one, I had our place, because that's a place they know too if they come for visits, because like I said, it's aimed at locals. Um, now, this is an artwork by Jane Evans. Jane Evans is a Nelson artist, and um, she is really beloved um, in our region. 
teachers absolutely adore her work because it's very colourful and, and so they like using it, um, particularly primary age, they like using it um, just because of those sorts of qualities. Yeah, um, but there was an added um, thing with this and that is that jo Jane Evans, a lot of her work features interiors and uh, Jane Evans had a condition that meant she spent a lot of time inside resting and um, and that was the same as what we were really doing um, during lockdown and, and she sort of shows the joy in everyday life, um, even pretty inactive everyday life, which <laughs> which is certainly what we had a lot of at, at the very beginning of all that. So um, beautiful, colourful pictures. I'm going to show you a bit more of this later on, but um, this was like an ideal starting point for us um, for this. So I, I use Jane Evans. We've got a lot of her artworks in our collection. She was a great benefactor of the Sota. It's uh, sad that she's passed away. Our foyers are even dedicated to her, actually. Um, so this is like the largest artwork we have by her in the collection and showing a reclining person having a rest in an afternoon is just right for the theme. So the lesson paralleled many of our lives um, at the time. And so I had an artwork, uh, a, a lesson where the kids would walk around the house and find people or thing or pets, obviously, who were who were resting and, and either photograph or sketch them and then use that to create your own artwork, which reflected the sort of <laughs> relaxing, languid nature of, of um, lockdown. So it's it's sort of the fact being at home is an enjoyable thing. Um, so emphasising the positivity. So that was the first one I did. And I, I'm going to show you a little bit more of that one later on because I'll show you how, how I put it together. Um, the second one I made was also on a, on a really positive theme, uplifting windows. Um, and um, we had this really great artwork um, at the suitor at the time, um, window art. And that was very appropriate because you remember we had the teddies and windows all around and we were meant to be going out for our exercise every day and looking for teddy bears with our families, if we had families. Um, and so I thought it would be very appropriate um, if we um, did some window art because while we were also looking for teddies, we could see, we could communicate with other people that we couldn't see while we were locked down through our windows. Um, this art works by Shannon Novak and it's called Safe Space and it was a temporary installation art that we had at the Suja at the time. And so it was really well known um, because, you know, you can walk by and see it all the time and, and, and being so colourful was pretty popular too. So so that was a really good one to use. Um, and even during lockdown, the kids could still see this artwork. If they were going for the exercise and walking past their gallery, they could see it. Looks good at night, doesn't it? I don't think many kids be walking, walking down in the middle of the night, but looks good in the daytime too. So the kids created a circular artwork and the cir circle... Um, symbolized a bubble because we we're thinking about keep our bubble was a safe space keeping safe and then they had something that was a symbol of something that represented their bubble being a special safe place inside it um that's just my model and um and we made them into window out really using a really 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 easy method <laughs> um so that was a really nice one and i was really pleased during lockdown when i was going off my walk that I, I saw some examples of the kids having done my thing so I could see some circular um, windows and, and theirs. So that was the second one I did. So I'll just show you a couple, a couple or maybe, I'm not sure how many more there are. This, this is still the lockdown period. Um, after a while, um, we've been in lockdown and you know, I started to think about cabin fever. So this this third one I did, I was thinking about, you know, how can we get out but not get out? And so I was thinking thinking about how if you remembered um, going on excursions, holidays, outings with your family, um, then it's almost like doing it. And you can do that through looking at, at the photos you've got from those things. And I linked it to this artwork we've got at the Suta. And you can see this is... Um, this is a really good for local curriculum because um, this is by Rita Angus and she painted this um, during World War II um, and um, this is a good 
COVID connection, these guys, um, they were pacifists and they went to the Riverside community to pick apples for the war effort because, uh, you know, because they didn't want to fight. And so they were like essential workers during World War II. So you could make parallels between the essential war workers with essential workers during COVID, which was uh, one connection that could be made. But um, if you look in the background, you can see that mountain, you can see that's the Crusader. So that's a really distinctive mountain we have in Nelson. Um, you can see it from all sorts of places. And, and so we can see this artwork is to do with our place. Of course, the apple orchards being set in apple orchards is also a really Nelson thing. So this was cool. And it had the um, the people sitting around having morning tea and it looked like a picnic. And so you could use this to start thinking about places if we went for picnics or outings on, and what we did. So we had a look at this one first. Oh, and this was around the time of Anzac Day too. So that World War II connection was, was also relevant in, in that case too. So I asked the kids to go and find their, um, their family photos, whether they're on devices or whatever. Um, mine, <laughs> mine wasn't on a device. Um, and find one that was a very special occasion that they thought looked really good and then turn it into a collage. Um, so this is, a, I don't know, no, that one, sorry. I thought that was going to move, but it doesn't. Um, so um, just using random paper from around the house, um, they could create the different layers of the, uh, of the photograph with a collage and actually uh, quite a few of the layers I've got there are just from the A8 Directions magazine. So it's like I, I wanted to show them that you could just use anything um, to make a really good collage. Collages are quite good things to do um, during lockdown because there's always a bit, you know, some sort of paper around the house that you can use. Um, and then I did a few more of those as well. And then um, in 2020, we started, we returned to school. And when um, when we were, um, some people returned to school. It was mainly to start with, as we all remember, it was the um, the kids of essential workers. And it, it sort of, as it got like some people were going back to school, I started thinking that I should make videos that were more aimed at um, at uh, that teachers could use, and so they could extend it a bit more. So. Um, I started thinking about things like, um, I made it, only made a couple of these because then we got back into normal, well, relatively normal programs. But um, I, I thought about some of the things we have at the Suta that don't come out very often because I think the video is a really, really good way to highlight aspects of your collection that don't get seen very much. Um, we have a very popular installation by Sally Burton, which I'll show you on the next slide. Um, which shows um, the wreck of the Delaware. This painting, um, this this is Huria Martinga by Gottfried Lindauer. It doesn't look like I've got the, um, sorry, I meant to hide that. I haven't got the artist's name there, Gottfried Lindauer, obviously. So I don't know why I didn't put the, the artist's name on there. Um, this this is a, a one of a very popular painting we've got at, at, um, at the Suta. And um, it depicts, um, a, a Māori chieftainess who has a lot of mana. She's, uh, she was very well known, well connected, um, and also very popular. Um, um, and she's also remembered because for something that happened because she and um, some other Māori um, saw a shipwreck from their house and swam out in 1863 and rescued a whole lot of sailors. And so she's sort of remembered as a heroine for that. That's why the the ships in, in that. Um, so um, this is the installation by Sally Burton. She uses the Lindau portrait and a whole lot of other bits of driftwood and all sorts of things. And it's a narrative piece that shows everything. Now, this hasn't been out on show at the Suta for a long time. It takes a big wall and everything, but it was super popular with teachers when it did used to come out and I'd be just be like teaching it all the time and I'd hardly get to do anything else because I'd just be teaching the record of Delaware again and again and again. Um, <laughs> but it hasn't gone out. So I was thinking maybe I could um, do an artwork that talks about the artwork and, and it's a bit hard to look at an installation on a, on a video, I know, but 
we looked at that and then we'd create our own artworks. And I was thinking about heroes and I thought it was good to, as far as this goes, it's good to extend it a bit. And this this is actually probably something that might fit in with uh, the New Histories curriculum, actually, which wasn't out when this did. But, you know, you can actually really start questioning why we think people are heroes and why they're important. And, and um, so, um, so um, I asked the kids to think about who they thought were who they thought were their heroes in lots of different ways they could be just family members or people that were um you know more nationally or even internationally known people and then um, we i showed i did a demonstration of how to paint on an umbrella and that might not be new to a lot of you guys i remember um quite a few years back i went to um one of the ANZAAE conferences and um michael tuffery was demonstrating how to paint on an umbrella um, but I, this is really good painting on an umbrella and, and you've got in our market is basically non-specialist art teachers so they probably wouldn't even think of the idea of painting on something different so I sort of wanted to extend the teachers and I also thought the umbrellas were a good symbol of protection you know because they protect us from the rain in theory um, so um, I did this demonstration of oh, I used a cinder um, not um, not for political reasons, just because she's she's been thought of as as a hero. Just cinders up in my classroom all the time now because <laughs> I just wanted to be able to show the teacher teachers when they come in the actual umbrella and, and sort of refer them because this is um, a resource that's ongoing. Here's a student example. He did his uncle who was an Iron Man, and I think he was something some sort of military guy as well. Isn't that beautiful? I was really pleased to receive that. Um, and then after that we had a, a few months where you know i was really enjoying just teaching in the gallery and all the regular things we do and but then sometimes i think oh it's sad i can't make my videos anymore i love making those videos and um then be careful what you wish for then all of a sudden we had our lockdown um last year and um it all happened so quickly didn't it and so um that time I um, I had quite a few um, people that couldn't come for their bookings. So the first videos I started making were um, videos that were based on um, lessons that I was going to deliver in the gallery. Um, so Crazy Chroma um, was based on an exhibition. Um, we had a collection. These are artworks from our collection, but we had... Um, some sheets by the artist Joseph Albers and it was all about colour theory and I was going to do some lessons, um, delivery on colour theory and percep colour perception and things like that and, and Joseph Albers has got exercises about that so you can just use his exercises so um, I see it's quite pop arty it's a really cool exhibition the kids really like the kids that actually got to go to the gallery really liked it but um, what we did was um, I brought it to them that's the first one I did, and this should play a little bit. Um, they did some exercises, and then they just did a collage using the um, sort of visual principles that um, we talked about. Very easy, fun. <laughs> and, you know, these these aren't aimed for necessarily doing it at home. These are aimed that teachers could easily use them again. Um, and there's... An example from my cat, isn't that nice? So these one, it was sort of abstract and who, who wants a cat? As you can see, because it says cat, um, but it's an abstract cat. It's beautiful, isn't it? Um, so it's really nice to get those. Um, and another exhibition we had on at the time, which it was Pangea, which was really cool. It was a really cool exhibition um, and um, it's kind of, like I said, it's a little bit strange trying to show what these exhibitions are like on the screen. Um, this is by Natchez Hudson and it's an installation and, and he uses um, the contours of mountain ranges and he, he uses them as a, as a sort of visual element and um, makes designs out of them. So it's really quite fun. Um, yeah, so they couldn't come, but I showed them a little, a few interior shots on the thing. Now Nelson 
I'm sure a lot of you guys have been to Nelson. Um, we've got lots of mountains that you can see from wherever you are in Nelson. At the beach in Nelson, uh, we see the Kahurangi Range here, and this is just a section of it. It's very long. There's lots of bumps on it. All those bumps are mountains with names. Um, and um, thinking about local curriculum, you know, learning, learning the names of some of the mountains that you see every day, that, I think that's really worthwhile for getting to know your place. Um, if, if you're looking the other way, like if you're in Motueka or Tasman and you look back, you see um, the Richmond Ranges and um, Toss Wollaston had a lot of images showing those those mountains and his artwork too. So wherever you're looking in Nelson, pretty much you're seeing some mountains. So I decided that that um, we could use our mountains and learn a bit about our mountains and, and then create our own uh, work using our mountains as, as a um, design element. So um, this should play. We just made, I gave them a photograph, a link to a photograph of, of the Kahurangi mountains and they just chose the bits they like the look of. That's the devil's thumb there, that one there. Um, yeah, I think what that might be the Crusader. Yeah, so you can see I'm using recycled paper there too. I like to sort of model the fact that you, you don't have to use fancy materials. So this, I don't think it matters that that's recycled paper and um, I want the kids to feel like they can just enjoy themselves without having to use the best materials. Um, so we ended up with a whole lot of pieces and just the same really simple construction that Natchez did, the slotted sculpture. Um, they got their pieces and then they played around with it a lot and when they were happy, I got them to, you know, like you do when you're doing sculpture, to look at it from different angles and think about what they, you know, what was the best and then choose one and put it together. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased with mine. I've still got mine up at home. <laughs> and I just, before I finish, before I finish talking about um, my um, my programs, I just want to show you this last one. So um, this is one that relies on an artwork from our collection again. And I like this one because it's got a strong link to maths. Um, and I think it, it, for uh, the art gallery educators out there, I think that, um, well, we, we all know with, the new LEOTC that we that it's really of great importance to make curriculum links to other curriculum areas but actually it, it really makes heaps of sense in art to to highlight those connections really I think uh, educationally um, so this is a beautiful artwork we have in the Suter's collection uh, it's a Parvacini screen by Chiara Cobaletto and it, all these little pieces are made out of polypropylene plastic um, it doesn't come out very often because it takes ages and ages to put out. See these two guys? They've all got domes. All these pieces, it comes in a box and all these little Parvacini, the shapes called Parvacini, and all those shapes take ages to put together. Like, honestly, I think it takes about a day to put up. Um, so we don't see it very much, but it is really, really great when it comes out and obviously very great for teaching tessellation. Um, so um, I did... The shape Parvacini is based on um, an a very common Italian biscuit called the Parvacini. That's a cool thing to talk to the kids about too, that, that, that you know, art can be inspired by just all sorts of whatever, everyday stuff. Um, I think that's a, a good thing to underline. Um, so the first thing I got the kids to do was to make a whole lot of Parvacini shapes. Um, out of whatever paper they had. I've got quite fancy paper because I'm an art teacher. Um, and then just play around with whatever they could do with it. Um, play around with it quite a lot and then stick it down. So this is a warm-up activity really, but I gave them two activities in this one because it's hands-on. That's what we're all about, isn't it? Hands-on. Um, yeah. Pretty. And then... Here it is. Um, and then I um, showed them how to use a square of cardboard to create a tessellating shape. That's my square of cardboard, my tessellating shape. And we use milk bottles to make heaps of them. And um, actually this milk bottle plastic looks really quite similar to the polypropylene that Chiara Corbelletto used. It's a little bit hard to get completely flat pieces, but 
it was pretty good. Um, yep, that's the finish. Well, it's a close up of the finished one. Um, it wasn't meant to look like badges, it just sort of ended up like that when I put the hole punch in. Um, so those are some of my videos. Um, there's a, a few more there. You can look on my channel if you want to check them out in more detail. But I just, you know, it's kind of nice to see the content of people's lessons, isn't it? We don't necessarily see it. Um, so the equipment I used was extremely basic. I didn't even have a good phone. I had a very old phone that my brother gave me, a hand-me-down iPhone 6, which has since broken. I used that for all my photos and videos. Um, I used a voice recorder app on my phone to make voiceovers. I had no mic. Um, I used on my phone, I had a really simple Photoshop mix app um, just to make that those those shot images that are at the beginning of each of the videos. Um, and I'll show you all this in a little while. And then the actual, the way I put it all together was I just used um, the video maker, which is inside Windows, which is part of the Windows suite for creating the video. And really, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. I just used it because it was there and it was so easy. I hardly had to learn a single thing because it's just like extremely basic. Everything was free. And later on, I got a gooseneck attachment to support my phone while I was videoing so I didn't have to sort of balance it on funny things. I had an excellent long white coffee table, which was, oh, what's happened? Don't know what's happened there. Hang on, I'm just gonna. Oh yeah, no, I've gone too far, far for. Um, I a long white coffee table, um, which is leftover gallery furniture actually, which was really it's good to have to do with light. You know, like our white coffee table is really good for making things on because you can see things really clearly. I didn't have a single special light or microphone and maybe in the future I'd like to have them but I don't and it was fine but I did really think about curtains the time of the day the places around the house where there was good light and you know I you, I definitely could improve everything heaps you know you, 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 there's heaps but really um I was everything was everything was okay I got lots of really positive feedback from my schools about these videos um so if you want to use photos on your Windows computer, at work we have Windows computers, so um, you just get go to the Windows, the Photos app, and then when you click on it, it, it opens there, and then you, you go to the place that says Video Editor and click on that, and then there you are. And if you want to make it, and usually all these little grey images are populated with pictures that, of the videos, but I'm having some technical issues at the moment at work, and so for some reason they don't show up. But um, when you want to make a new video project, you um, click on new video project, obviously, and name it, and then it looks like this. Um, and all the little storyboard down the bottom, all those little areas are where you can put the different components of your of your video, and they could be stills, they could be moving images, they could be like title cards. Um, so um, this is where you add things, right? So you um, you click on add, and you decide where you're going to get the images or the video from. And this is just for images; it's not for sound, just for the image part of it. And select something. So I've I've added this, and when you want to place it in the storyboard, you just click on where it says place in storyboard, and it moves down to the bottom. I didn't do that here for some reason. Um, another thing you can do is you can make title card. You see where it says add title card just there? You can add title cards. Now, I think the title cards are a bit ugly. I did use them because, like I said, I was just trying to get things going. You can actually create your own title cards and then just bring them in, import them. But I, you can also use this. Um, it's got a real limited, you know, as far as design goes, it's got, like, Mm. Sorry, it's gone away. It's gone backwards. It's got um, really limited design things, which is very irritating for people like us in the art 
deal, but uh, you can do something with them. Um, if you had more time, you'd probably just make your own ones, which were like a thousand times nicer, but they do work. So they can, they're like chapter headings. I use them as chapter headings. I'll show you in a little while. Um, um, and then if you want to insert your own voiceovers, you go to custom audio and um, you add the audio file there. So that's where you add the sound. Um, so let's go to an example. I'll just quickly show you. How are we going for time? Oh yeah, we're going fine for time. I'll just show you this one. I'm not going to um, just quickly show it to you. So just try it. I'm just gonna, here we go. So that's the, there it is. So this is my project, Stay at Home Art Adventures. This is ridiculously long, actually. I have to say, just talking about them all, that, you know, most good, as you probably know, most good YouTube videos are quite short. And I, I decided that eight to 10 minutes is good for one. Mine are, have got quite a lot of components, so eight to 10 minutes is good. This 19 minute one, it was my first one, so I was just trying to, work out how to do it so it is very long but um I, we can still see how it works so um you see how I, these are all the different parts of it in here all along the bottom um that you can see and the little white thing is the duration so three seconds for three seconds you get this at home art adventure here um and then it moves on to an intro video that i have which is me just saying who i am and where i come from and then uh, in this one, then I, I move on to this other video where I say, actually, I'm not at the sushi, I'm at home, and and introduce the activity, and then there's some stills. See, so I've all these Jane Evanses you can see down the bottom. So we we move through um, looking at some examples of Jane interior images of Jane Evans. Remember how I said she loved daily insight. She just loved just life, enjoying life at home, and things like that. So which was a really great theme for. Uh, yeah, there we go. Um, another one. We've got lots of these at the Sota. Um, and there's, there's the one that we worked on, Summer Siesta, it's called. Um, yeah, and then obviously I went back to talking. That's a bit of an unflattering image. And then here's a title card. I might just make this go for a second so you can see the writing on it. So, so then the title, I use the title card to just give a clear instruction. Um, I might voice over it as well. I think I've, I don't know whether I've voiced, uh, um, I probably voiced over a lot of them as well. If the kids couldn't, you know, if the kids were young and they couldn't read, it's good to be able to hear the writing and the reading. Um, so then they went around the house and uh, looked for people like my son and my dog and cat and me and stuff. And then once they did that, there's another title. Oh, I don't know. No, that's not meant to be there actually. That must be a wrong. There we go. We talked about what materials I could use to make my artwork. Then I had a little video on the materials. I'm not going to take too long on all this. Um, so I just went through step by step um, and had some demonstrations. This is my image I decided to do. Jake, my son, having a sleep, has very strong parallels to the Jane Evans image. Uh, yep, and um, and I had some instructional, you know, just some hands-on making videos. So the sketching one. So I demonstrated some sketching, and I also demonstrated. This is very long because I didn't speed up this one, but I demonstrated painting, um, how to paint, and add the colours and stuff like that. Uh, and um, one somebody was just asking me about how I what I did to do with social media so um, at the end of each of my videos I this is my first one and I didn't have Insta then but um, I just have a little panel at the end where I ask the kids to email me their work to share on Insta if, if they want to um, and ask them to give permission through that um, so, so that's that, and let's just go back to the other one. There we go. Um, so this is the sound app, just like a little cassette recorder. You just record it, get an audio file, um, and I can export 
that audio file to the thing I'm making. And that's the Photoshop, the tiny little Photoshop thing, very uncomplicated. So you have your projects and you've just got a few layers. I've got me, I've got the thing in the background and it has some very limited fonts and colors and stuff. And then you get this little image. Um, but it, it did allow me to have a sort of continuity so they, they could, they're familiar with what they would see. Like this is one of Esther's videos because it always has this thing on the front of it. Um, this is my setup, my home. Um, I, instead of that round table, I had a big white table. And um, the really cool thing about it is that um, there's really good light in my lounge. And so as long as it was like the morning or, yeah, basically best in the morning, but um, you just got really lovely light on on the filming and that, that did make a big difference. Um, this is the thing that I bought to hold off Trade Me, to hold the camera. Um, and so I could just get some of my old colonial furniture and screw this thing onto it. And um, the other side, I clip my phone on and it could be above my, um, my image when I was drawing or painting for the kids. So basically that's it. Um, I'm really happy to answer any questions. Um, it's very simple. I hope that um, it, it's been worthwhile for you. And um, yeah, I'm really happy to talk, uh, to answer any questions that you guys have. Thank so. you so much, Esther. That is so inspiring. Right. I think you've done such an amazing job making all those videos um, and just doing it all at home with stuff that you've got around you. The, and the only thing you bought was that gooseneck I think that's really inspiring. Um, we have had a few questions, so I'll just go back to the chat and yeah. have a look at what people have said. Um, hang on a second. Um, so Grace has asked, um, how were the videos distributed to teachers and students? And were the videos mostly used by classes, meeting, over, meeting online over lockdown, or by kids and family groups who were at home? And in brackets, did teachers assign the task to students? So that's kind of three questions in one, yeah. really. Okay. Yeah, thanks for those questions. They're good ones. And I'm sorry I didn't answer them during the thing. Um, so firstly, um, what was the first one? It was the first one was how did you distribute the videos to teachers and students? So I'm sure you guys all have mailing lists. So I, I just used my regular mailing list. Um, I've got two mailing lists. I've got my one of all the teachers that communicate with me. So it's like everybody, basically mainly people in my region. So, um, and also I have a list of schools and I just email both of them with the link and uh, sort of a description of, um, you know, what the curriculum links were and just like a, a pretty friendly, they, they were, I mean, I thought they'd be too busy to read extra stuff, but I got lots of, they really appreciated having someone and they liked having the videos too so and then they took the the link and um put it into their weekly at home program for the kit this is for the 2021 for um they put it into their learning their weekly learning thing and um the the real thing for us is as gallery and museum educators is that if we do this sort of thing we can't really tell how much they get used because um we don't know what a click means. We can see someone's clicked on it. We can't know with, you know, what, like when you're in the gallery, you can talk to the kids and you can find out what they, you know, and you can, see they're actually there too, but you don't know whether they've just clicked on it by accident and then gone off and played with their Lego or, you know, you really don't know what's going on. But, um, but I got really positive feedback from, from teachers and, and it, it, it was part of my early OTC program. So it was, designed for schools, designed for school teachers to use with their children, with their children were learning at home, or with they were learning um, at school, <laughs> you know, that or or both. Um, so, um, so it wasn't really just, I mean, it did, could easily get used by anybody, but it was under my LEOTC contract. So I was thinking LEOTC when I created it really and that's why you know like if it wasn't LEOTC I wouldn't need to be thinking such a lot about curriculum links and things like that what you know you could just do a fun activity and I saw lots of really great you know I know heaps of you guys did 
learning experiences and I've seen quite a few ones that were more focused just on the just making the art but um I wanted to have the curriculum links because because of the you know just to add more depth to the experience really um but then the kids can just go and make the art if they want to obviously <laughs> yeah so the teachers can make more of it if they want you know it's there for the teachers to use to the extent that they want to Thank Does you. that all the questions? Yeah. No. Lisa said um, she's interested to know how the children sent through their artistic responses. Oh, I think you might have answered that using that email address. Um, she also asks, are they yeah. available publicly? And if so, how do you cover image permissions? Image so this permissions. Is, this is the children's artwork that they've made in response oh. to what um well any kids they didn't really i didn't actually get that many you know that but you know it's like everyone was just busy on their own thing really um but i they, they're on instagram or facebook and if you i mean if if they were sent to me they were sent to me with the understanding that they'd be put and put on put on and i got like for instance that girl holding up her one or the boy holding up his umbrella they they gave me permission to put their faces on you know their parents you know, they were quite okay with it i would never put kids up if, if i didn't have permission mm. but they, they had their parents permission yeah and we've got a technical question from Di. did you use um usual acrylic paint on the umbrella um yep everything i use well i mean i did I put, you know, I put, I primed it, um, but I just use everything I use. I use is the cheap stuff that the kids could get. I don't use fancy stuff with kids because, like, it, I mean, it might look better, but it's, they can't do they can't do that. So I, I basically was just using really simple stuff. But I, I guess that probably primer is not not um, basic, but. You, you kind of have to prime an umbrella before you, <laughs> you know, just the, I mean, you can watch my video. Yeah, I mean, uh, the link's going up for my YouTube channel and, and there's a, it's like ex ha such a how-to video because basically that that video, the painting on the umbrellas, the how-to was almost more for the teacher than for the kids because I thought if the teachers are confident about this, wouldn't it look really glorious to have all these umbrellas hanging from the ceiling with whatever, even if they didn't choose their heroes, whatever, it's like visually really cool. And you just want to um, encourage kids to be, um, teachers to be confident with, with what they do um, and, and just to, you know, do things that are sort of exciting. It would take ages to do those umbrellas, <laughs> but, you know, it would be such a fun thing. It would be really memorable, I think. Yeah. Does that answer the question? I think it does. Yeah, it does. I've got so I think that's all the questions. You've also got lots of really lovely comments of people saying that they're really inspired, they love your work, <laughs> and they've been watching your videos, and they're really fun. So that's really nice. Um, and I've got a few questions for you as well. I think we've got time. Um, so if um, the first question is, how many have you made? What? How many have you got in your collection? Your videos? Um, something like 10 not heats I don't have any time to do it I mean I'm only 0.5 and basically I'm so busy with my teaching I really that's just a struggle to plan and teach my regular lessons usually so I can't see any more coming in the future but I do think as far as I, I want to just pop this in there that I'm thinking that with um where we're at at the moment with COVID, um, it, it would definitely be worth um, developing a sort of a hybrid system where you have like short video excerpts. And uh, so I, I know some of you guys, maybe Monica or some people like that already might do this, but if you have a live online delivery for schools and then you, you can insert like little bits, like I've got my videos, so sort of a hybrid of a live and a, and what I've got there, that would be good. But yeah, so this 10, it, I, well, I don't know, about 10 or maybe, t I don't I suppose, know. Yeah, I suppose as well, they're also, if they're still, still available, you know, they stand alone as a learning resource that teachers can mm. use. And I guess you can develop them as like pre or post visit activities that relate to an actual visit as well, couldn't you, if you had time? Yeah, yeah, I know it would be great to have more time to do stuff like that because, mm. you, know, you know, we've heard a lot that teachers 
would value the professional development of experts like people people like us who work in museums and galleries and having videos is one way that they can get that expertise easily if and you know the good thing about the videos is is that it's not like every time that it, it lives on and, and it can get used many times but if you're presenting something that's it you know it's like you've presented to that class and then you have to take another hour to present to another class and another hour to present to another class but anyone can click on the videos and the, and the classroom teacher can use it however they want to mm, yeah yeah um the other thing is that obviously you know doing this work was a bit of a steep learning curve for you and you were sort of <laughs> as you were going and making them and refining them as you went on you said the first yeah. one was 20 minutes long and then you realized that eight yeah. to ten minutes so long. yeah um I wondering what else you've learned like if you've got some top tips for people if people have wanted to embark on doing this themselves if, now that you've gained your experience you know what would you recommend doing or not doing or what would you do differently what things do you need to bear in mind well, you know I just think about my audience you know my my who, who's it for and what are they interested in and what have I got this is what we do normally as teachers isn't it what have I got who, who is it for and what can I create that's going to make a connection between the people that want the resource and, and what I've got really so you know like me connecting the um, collection with the kids and, and stuff you know stuff like that like Jane Evans and stuff you know that that's really and that's just but you know from my PhD I know I've talked to heaps of the gallery educators everybody's thinking about making things student-centered that's what we do everybody does yeah so um, basically it's just an extension on what I think all of us do really I haven't really got that many top tips but but I just like don't think it's hard I guess because it really wasn't that hard it wasn't that hard I mean but it time consuming but not that hard and and people and it doesn't have to be perfect people didn't mind at all that you know when you if you watch some of them you'll realize that they are extremely clunky and like my voice sounds terrible in some of them and then the sound change you know like there's all these like technically like these like things that would make you cringe if you're making it but it doesn't matter because what matters is the what the kids following through and learning and making the art and and um learning while they do it and and you know it was well received so I think you shouldn't you shouldn't feel like you can't do it yeah so I think that mine what I wanted to say I don't know if I said this at the beginning but this is an example I'm like one of the one of the people who's in a small institution I work on my own basically and uh, I have a part-time service and um and a, a distinct audience a regional audience and, and, you know, I could do something, you know, even though we're very low, we have very low resourcing at the social as far as education goes, well, you know, don't, don't be limited. Heaps you can do for free if you've got the time. <laughs> yeah, and the inclination and the drive and the yeah. energy yeah. and the yeah. creativity. And yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was quite emotional I mean my heart was really with with my children I, you know I, I just felt so I mean we all probably felt that we really felt for our families that we weren't seeing and you know we were just it was something I could do for my my families yeah so mm -hmm. it was it was like I mean I know it was not like giving people a blanket or something but it was sort of like you know felt like I was doing something something worthwhile to help mm. people during that time the original ones yeah and it's great that you got the feedback from the teachers and it's really wonderful that you got some students work back as well I think that's so magical to see <laughs> yeah. how students have followed it and created their own work so that's really precious um oh we've just had another question about the video editing program but Monica has put an answer in for that one so I think that's it on the questions front unless anybody else wants to pop in quickly and say anything every I think we're getting lots of positive comments from everyone yeah, um, nice. about it thank you so much Esther for sharing your practice I mean what we're trying to do with this webinar series is to highlight what different people are doing across the country um, with di in different scenarios with you know you're a small regional gallery with a you know 
working on your own with a relatively small budget and look what you can achieve. So giving people inspiration and sharing stories about what we're up to can only help the network of educators across the country. We can all learn from each other and get inspiration from each other. So thank you so much for giving your time today and sharing. Um, and we'd like to encourage others to share. So if, you, if you've been trying to work on something about um, working remotely or getting in touch with teachers or students during COVID issues, um, anything that you want to share, we'd love to hear from you. Even if you don't want to do like a whole webinar like Esther has today, even if you want to just share for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, get in touch and we can put together um, lots of different organizations together in one webinar so you don't have to cover as much time if you just want a little snippet of sharing that would be great um, so we'd love to hear from you um, and if you've um, received our newsletter you'll know that um, we have just kicked off our mentor program and I can see that some people here today are part of that program so thank you to everybody who signed up to be part of that mentor program I hope you really enjoy um, the connections that you're going to be making with each other across the next sort of six months or so that that program is running um, next week, I'm really um, delighted to be able to um, let you know that we have Maria Barnes um, sharing her knowledge and experience of um, Kaupapa Māori teaching and learning practices. And she'll be joined by the educators, the Kaupapa Māori educators from the learning team at Te Papa. Um, Natasha, Hoati and Leroy will be in conversation with Maria, uh, sharing their experiences about um, supporting Māori learners as well. So that will be a really... Um, Great webinar ne next week, same time, same place next week. Um, and yeah, we also just want to um, let you know that I know it's a tricky time at the moment with COVID and the traffic light system and things chopping and changing all around the place. So we just want to send that aroha to everybody and um, offer you our support and if you've got any questions or anything you're concerned about there's always the Facebook page where I know people are using that forum which is great so we can support each other ask questions share advice um, whatever we need to do there um, yeah so after the webinar that next week um, Maria is going to be leading a program for Kai Mahi Māori within the sector uh, professional development and support program. So if you or any of your colleagues or anyone you know in the sector would be interested in being involved in that, please let us know. It's not too late to sign up to that. Okay, so I will close with karakia. Unuhia, unuhia, unuhia ki te uru tapu nui, ki awatia, ki a mama, ti nākau, ti tīnana, ti wairua i te ara takata. Koya rā i rongo, whakariria ake ki runga, ki a tīna, tīna, huie, tai ki e. Thank you everybody. Matiwa.